there is a thing called standard schema that is basically a standard interface for TypeScript schema validation libraries. What does that mean? Basically, it's an interface that lets you swap between schema validation libraries. And the result is, for example, what you can do here on TimeStack form. You can also do that on other libraries, but this is just super easy and straightforward to show. In this case, if I click submit, you're gonna see that there are some errors coming from Zod. And in fact, this Zod schema is also passed here to the unchanged validator. But what I can do? Well, I can just remove the Zod schema and use the valuable schema. I didn't need to do any other change. And if I submit, now the errors are coming from Valibot. And just to prove you that it's that simple, you can do exactly the same with R-Type. I click Submit, and now the errors are coming from the R-Type validator. So the first huge advantage is that if you're using a library that is supporting Thunder Schema, you can really change the validators here with literally zero effort. But you may think, well, this isn't anything new. In fact, if I go to the Zod example, this was already possible, I mean, using a Zod schema into a form, but this was a required step. You had to use a Zod validator. And even if from the developers using the form perspective, this isn't too much of a deal. I mean, just add Zod validator and it already works. But this means that the developers of the library have to implement a Zod validator adapter, a UP adapter, a Valibot adapter, and basically there has to be an adapter for each single validation library. And this is true for all libraries, like if I take React hook form and I go on schema validation, again you see there's a UP schema, and here there's a resolver, UP resolver. Again, as a developer, just read that in the doc, but as a library developer, it means that this resolver has to be created first and then maintained. Otherwise, if there's not an adapter here, means that you either cannot use that schema library at all with the other library, or you have to do some tricks to make it kind of compatible. And there are also some other scenarios, and we can have a good read here in their sound schema readme. And I forgot to mention that if you like my content, you can click the subscribe button. Let's go back to the video. Here it basically defines that it's a consortium of schema library that agreed to a common interface that is something similar to this. And by the way, we're gonna see in a moment why the interface starts with the tilde character. And as also mentioned here, this simplifies implementation in case someone wants to create a new schema library. If they implement the standard schema interface, it is already possible to use that new library into all the other existing libraries implementing the interface. Also prevents vendor lock-in. If you want to switch between one or another library, you can just do that. But there are also some other reasons that are defined here into the background story. And this is another problem that is defined in this paragraph, that in some cases I can think of um, convex using a kind of a valuable wrapper, or maybe astro using Zod for validation, which means if you're using that library, you also have to use the only supported schema library. And that's because each schema library obviously has its own interface. With the common interface, you will be able to use any schema library you want. And in this case, Colin, the creator of Zod, teamed up with the creator of Valuable and Archetype to create this interface. And I really hope other schema libraries are gonna adopt it as well. But you, as a developer, do you need to do something in particular? Well, technically, no, because if I scroll up a little bit, who's affected is schema libraries author who have to adhere to the interface, in this case, this tree, and third-party libraries that have to support the schema library interface. So it is a little extra work on top of this and that category, but it also means that by implementing one more schema, you're also implementing all of them. With a little bit of extra effort, the entire ecosystem is gonna benefit from that. And as I mentioned, if you were curious about the tilde, it is explained here, where basically the goal was having this interface to not conflict with the existing APIs and also to be last in the list, so that each schema library can have all their own interfaces and properties and functions, and they also support the standard schema, but this shouldn't cause any issue to other developers using those schema libraries. Overall, what do you think? Do you see the benefit that this implementation brings? Or do you see it as just one more standard that everyone has to support? I personally think it is actually a good idea to group all the schema libraries into one interface, but I'm also interested in your opinion, so let me know in the comments. With that said, I hope you liked this video, thanks for watching, see you in the next one, bye!